This video has been brought to you by GoFiber. Enter your pictures and win a one year supply of GoFiber. It's easy to enter. Order a free sample, take a clear before and after pictures and send them to selfie at gofiber.com. Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for tuning in to the second episode of Topical Finasteride series I decided to make for strictly educational purposes, especially for all you guys who plan on using this solution for androgenic alopecia management. Now back to the topic, uh, how can we find the most effective and simultaneously most side effect friendly topical finasteride concentration? Well, first, we want this solution to minimally affect the systemic DHT while inducing maximum effect on scalp DHT suppression. Now, based on this clinical study that I was already talking about in the previous episode, we know that a widely available 0.25% topical finasteride solution is indeed able to suppress a scalp DHT by as much as 70%, but simultaneously causing unnecessarily high plasma DHT suppression. And for that reason, they decided to do a dose response testing with one milliliter of this 0.25% solution by using first 10%, 20%, 30%, and 40% of this solution. This corresponds to a reduced concentration of 0.025%, 0.05%, 0.075%, .05 and 0.1%. Now let's observe this for reduced concentration of uh, the original 0.25% solution, let's compare their scalp DHT suppression versus serum DHT suppression ability, okay? So the highest scalp DHT suppression of 54.3% has been observed by 0.1% solution with a serum DHT suppression of 47.7%. Surprisingly, the second best was the weakest 0.025% solution with scalp DHT suppression ability of 52.3% and serum DHT suppression of only 24.4%, making it the most ideal dose from all four as far as maximizing the scalp DHT suppression and lowest finasteride plasma exposure. 0.05% and 0.075% induced worse scalp DHT suppression compared to 0.025% one and also unnecessary high plasma DHT suppression. Now some of you may be asking like Matt should we trust this study? Well in my opinion of course it's just my opinion the, this is first of all clinical study which fulfills important quality criteria. Plasma DHT was measured in a laboratory in the Netherlands using fully validated LCMS known as liquid chromatic mass spectrometry, which is an exceedingly sensitive and specific analytical technique that can precisely determine the identities and concentration of compounds within your blood sample, okay? Furthermore, they have also used 4 millimeter punch scalp biopsies for scalp DHT and testosterone analysis. These analyses were performed at baseline and six hours after the last multiple dose. So with 0.025% topical finasteride, you are able to suppress the scalp DHT by about 52% and serum DHT by only 24%. With a 10 times stronger solution, 0.25% one, you are able to inhibit scalp DHT by as much as 70%, but expect your plasma DHT to be reduced by as much as 75 to 80%. Now, it's really up to you how you assess the risk reward ratio. I'm not a doctor, okay? And I'm not here to tell you which one you should use and whether you should even use it. I just wanted to inform you guys that among all of the available topical finasteride formulations online or be it like the ones compounded by pharmacies, you can oftentimes stumble upon topical formulations which have, which have unnecessary high concentrations like mine I got from a pharmacy, okay, and it was like 0.25% solution. Sure, it was compounded by a pharmacy, but based on this clinical study, it wouldn't be the safest solution for a more like side effect concerned individual. I did not get any side Side effects from using this 0.25% solution uh, for like six months, but technically the side effects are more likely to occur uh, with this one compared to a 0.025% solution, which still, by the way, has shown a decent efficacy and uh, I think like three times less finasteride plasma exposure. And for this reason, in the next topical finasteride episode, we will be talking about how to customize a commercially available topical finasteride solution and make it a more suitable 
and side effect free version for your particular hair loss situation okay so that was it guys if you enjoyed this video make sure you support it by hitting the like button and comment below in case you have any questions and i will see you in the next topical finasteride episode cheers